I'm sure you've seen your fair share of indie horror games that had no substantial planning to how things panned out. There's 100 new indie games out there every day, but here's a game that did everything near perfect and then dumped it all to the ground. You know what game I'm talking about, it's From the Darkness by Nabal, and here's why it was the perfect indie horror game till it wasn't. From the Darkness is a game made by Naba, which was released on itch.io and Steam. His catalog includes this game along with three horror titles, a dungeon runner, and a chill platformer called Stoneball. He also has a new game in development called Nine Child Street, which has a demo release on itch.io. From the Darkness though, is I think the best game he created yet, but the game's second half is where everything falls short. The game is a first person horror game set in a bleak apartment complex where you explore the abandoned apartment of your deceased grandfather, to which you came for an old family album. But strange things begin to happen in that apartment. The apartment doesn't seem to be empty and the only way to escape is to meet face to face with the unwelcome guest. I had great expectations for the game as it opened up in a creative way. Then everything became half-assed and placed for the sake of placing things. It was sad to see a game with so much love and so much potential be later finished in a boring and uninteresting way. Okay, let's talk about what this game has done bad first. Not all games are perfect, but the charm of an indie game is always going to be why they are still played to this date. With limited resources, time, patience and motivation, solo developing is bound to have downsides. The game has a solid start, but in my opinion tapers down to a mediocre setting after a certain silent jump scare sequence. I'm not going to spoil anything because I think you should play this game yourself, or at least watch someone else play it. The first half had so many intricate thought out details on how the sequence should be played out, but then towards the end becomes more of a sleepwalking simulator. There are no more intricate setups or well thought out designs but just a basic dark layout to walk through and progress the game. My other problems with the game is the unclear conclusion of the game. The conclusion is clearly lazy writing on the dev's part. When you set things up so well in the start, the mistakes or lazy setup is amplified that much more in the game and feels that much more unlikable. This is mainly because the expectation set up in the start of the game keeps the player excited and when the payoff is not delivered, especially in a horror game, the player is more likely to be annoyed. Annoyed in the sense where you feel you suffered through all of that and at the end of this trauma is just a half-assed conclusion. This is why if a first movie is bad, it does not receive as much hate as a dismal second sequel to a first movie which was great. As an example, JC Staff's One Punch Man Season 2 can be of great reference. My final gripe with this game is a trivial one. The title font needs some work and also just cut off the second half. Okay. Why do I still like this game? Although this game seems like an expansion of the previous game, Wrong Floor, and for the hundredth time has a dismal second half, this game has undoubtedly one of the best atmospheres I've witnessed in a long time. The aesthetic choices made by Naba like color and sound have been perfect, except for the title text. But in all seriousness, the first half of the game had done so many great things and I enjoyed it very much. Here's more on the good side of the game. The game as I mentioned before has really great lighting usage and the second you enter the main play area, you wanna leave. The atmosphere and soundtrack make it really uncomfortable to be there right off the bat and forces players into the area, which is a perfect setup for a horror game. The color palette and the apartment's wall decor is perfect for the haunting ambience of the apartment and greatly contributes to how it feels to be in that position. The soundtrack is immersive as it is perfect for an abandoned Russian apartment setting. The best character of this game is lighting, which many people overlook in the game. The game's lighting setup is done near perfectly as the developer uses darkness where it's required to hide things or to direct players into certain areas. So do try to appreciate this as much as you can in the game.
Even though a small map, the apartment is set up very well and the scares and scenarios are planned creatively in the apartment while using the lighting, view setup and line of sight. The rooms are set up cleverly as well as the player needs to make frequent trips and have different changes and setups in areas where the player has no line of sight. The threat too is not always in the deepest part of the setting which gives you no chance but to risk being trapped in that deepest area. The map is not limited to the apartment itself, as the scenario changes with the progression in the game. The layout is not as well put in the later parts of the game, but is used to convey an uncertainty. I think the areas that I'm talking about could have used more clever usage, like the apartment area. But I do understand the overall vision of the developer. Although there are some cheap jump scares, Unlike other games, it doesn't solely rely on those. It has other silent jump scares, creepy situations, and some scares are unexpected, but not how you think it would be. To expand more on this, the scares do not repeat themselves and are tastefully placed. Most games use the same mechanism of scaring a player, like a loud noise and cheap scares and use it again and again, but for this game, the cheap jump scare is not the main element but a medium to keep players on their edge, which is very clever as players know that there is a possibility of a jump scare in the game, but the game tends not to overuse it. The dev uses many clever ways of incorporating scary situations, which are not just simple loud noises and a jump cut. In the end, you should consider that Naba is a budding indie developer, and things like making mistakes, not being able to put in the same enthusiasm throughout the game's creation and making bad decisions are a part of the growth process of an indie horror dev. We see a new indie horror game pop up every other day, and to be able to make such a game without professional knowledge is still really impressive. I think this is a solid horror game, and I hope you realize the potential shown in this game by the developer. If I did not convince you to buy this game from itch.io or Steam, at least enjoy your favorite streamers or YouTubers play this game. Be sure to follow Naba on their journey to make more indie horror games. Links are all in the description. Anyways, that's all from me for today. I'll see you later.